The Speed Chess Championship Final was brought to you by On Juno. Sign up for a free checking account at onjuno.com to receive 5% cash back and a 2.15% bonus on deposits. It's your interest. Take it. In this video, we're going to look at the five best moves from the insatiable, the fantastical, the brilliant Frenchman MVL, one of the crowd's favorites. He pulled off a great victory by beating Magnus Carlsen. Now, do like and subscribe to this video, yeah? Otherwise, my non-existent eyebrow would get even higher and that will cause me a lot of pain. And then we'll move on to the examples. Which one is your favorite? This first example shows MVL break down the defenses of the world champion Magnus Carlsen. Many people just can't beat Carlsen in the ending, but MVL shows his skill. Having the queen up, he's certainly pushing, but Magnus does have a very decent blockade here. The next move, though, is simply brilliant. Can you see it? Do play along if you can. E6. Now, this move is like, what? But the point is shown in that if the pawn captures, the queen comes in here and we are pressurizing the position with that queen very strongly. The pawn is about to come forwards. So after e6, Magnus now takes with his bishop, but now the pawn is used, and the pawn is used to distract the rook. Little, little bit by bit, MVL makes progress. He can't win this position unless his king takes part. And what he does with this move is distract Magnus's rook to get behind that pawn, otherwise the pawn will come in. And now we're going to see his king becomes an important part in a couple of moves time. First of all, he improves the positioning of his queen, getting to a nice central square. Magnus tries to get the best blockade that he can. C7 comes. At the moment, that square is under control. But shortly, MVL increases the pressure greatly. King D3. And now the king starts its beautiful idea. King D4. The king comes to G7. King E5. The king, such an important piece in the ending. Look at it roll its way in. Magnus grabs a pawn, but finally the king gets into e7. And after this move, the cherry on the cake is queen f8 check. Magnus resigns as king f6 is coming next with checkmate. Brilliant example of small tactics to result in a beautiful checkmate pattern. Yet again, the world champion stumbles to crisp tactics from MVL. It's black to play. Black has a little bit of pressure, but how can he increase that pressure here? C3 check. It's amazing how all of these examples start with a little pawn sacrifice from MVL. A little, uh, je dupe. put that in your pipe and smoke it, my friend. And this move is a really nice example of clearance of a square seeing the potential of your pieces and making room for them. In this case, the knight to enter in the attack. If we go back, we can see that the queen and bishop are well placed, but the knight's not doing anything. And how does white recapture? If he takes with his king, we take the knight. So pawn takes as forced, and this knight slips in with check. And now king d3. You have to keep an eye on the white knight. Knight b2 check. And after king d2, we see the real point behind this tactic. It's a two-stager. Can you see it? Very crisp, very nice, forcing a winning position where Magnus simply resigned. Bishop takes e3. And all of Black's pieces are now coordinating in that perfect way. Great partnership. If the queen takes here, the knight now comes back, winning the queen. Other moves allow queen takes knight winning a piece, winning the game. So beautiful sort of demonstration of knight power there. <laughs> Hikaru versus MVL. And if you look at this position, you can see that MVL has these kind of devastating diagonals. That'd be a good title for a book, wouldn't it? Devastating diagonals. Boom, 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 boom. Bound to be a bestseller. What does MVL now play to use those diagonals and other pieces to start a great counterattack. Rook to d2. Again, it's really finding the focal point in your opponent's position that you want to attack. 
And if we look at this position, I would say that is g2. White's only defending it with the queen, and if we can increase the pressure on that square, we will find a way into the position. And this is a lovely move. It can't be taken because of the dark square bishop. And after pawn takes f7 check, MVL now keeps his king as safe as he can. And there's not much that Naka can do. He tries b4, a clever idea, freeing his rook using the pawn. But now bishop takes e3 check. And here, just rook takes a2. There's one, two more checks. But after g6, the advantage is well in MVL's court. Well, you're a piece up, you're attacking the rook and the queen, and it's game over. So a lovely little move there, throwing the rook right into Hikaru's guts. I would also like to say we've now got a special word from our main sponsors. So over to On Juno. Today's Speech Chess Championship video is brought to you by On Juno. With On Juno, you can create a free checking account in under five minutes, and that's pretty fast. They don't have physical branches, so you don't need to pay their executives millions of dollars in overhead each year. Plus, those savings are passed on to you, the consumer, in the form of 5% cash back on brands you love and use every day, including Amazon, Netflix, Uber, DoorDash, and more. Anjuno offers an industry-leading bonus rate of 2.15% on deposits, helping you grow your money, while Anjuno helps the game of chess grow. Backed by top companies like Sequoia and Polychain, Anjuno's clean interface and easy-to-use features let you take full advantage of the most powerful checking account on the planet. Click the link in the description below to sign up for an account today and receive 10% cash back on Chess.com memberships. On Juno, it's your interest. Take it. They do say that tactics is 99% of the game, and in some ways, I've got to agree with this. If you have a sharp tactical eye, your positional could play can be a lot worse than it should be. The other thing to bear in mind is though, tactics are generally going to work from positions of strength, meaning you have to build up your position first of all. Here we see MVL with the black pieces facing what looks like some active knights, but he finds a very good series of moves to take the pressure out and gain the advantage. He first plays rook takes c1, and after rook takes c1, bishop d6. Now there were some tactical problems with taking this one involving knight c6, but bishop d6 immediately forces that knight to move. The knight comes into c6. Of course, the knight on e5 can't move because h2 will drop. And now bishop takes c6, just trying to get that knight out of the way. Hikaru has one more try. Again, he can't take this bishop because it will either open up ways to h2 or lose the knight. He has to try g4, opening the queen to h2. Maybe something Hikaru was relying on. But now a lovely intermezzo move. Most players will look at their queen and go, Oh, the queen! <laughs> Ooh, I've got to move the queen! Maybe where well, they wouldn't panic quite that much. But the intermezzo move that Black now finds is the incredible bishop b5. That bishop is lost anyway, but now we're threatening the queen, so it has to be taken. And after queen h6, this quiet move, white can't do anything to avoid material loss. The simple threat is at some point either knight g6, getting rid of that knight there, and in a lot of cases, bishop takes knight when things are overextended in white's position. For example, the rook moves to e1 to get out of the way of that, but now knight g6. The knight is really hanging. Rook e2 was played, but after bishop takes e5, queen g5 is the final tactic when the bishop is pinned and white is clearly losing. A lovely series of crisp tactical moves there from MVL. MVL's top five moves from the chess.com speed chess championships. The championships, I hope they do next year. Uh, I'm still waiting for my invite. Uh, I might have to improve my tactics a bit, but um, what a great event it is. Now go and like and subscribe to the channel and goodbye for now. Bye.